Well, hey, everybody, thank you for just taking a moment to watch this video. I wanted to do this video with you, Steve Seiler, Dove Award winning musician, composer, songwriter, but more than that, a man of God who has a heart for the things that God has a heart for mm -hmm. the orphan, the widow, the stranger. And in this case, I want to talk about a survivor of childhood abuse. It just makes me tear up just even say those words, but you are working on a project and it's called the Innocent Child Project. And I thought we could just take a moment. Could you tell me what's the Innocent Child Project? What's it all about? Well, the Innocent Child Project is going to be a multimedia project that includes songs, music videos, uh, documentary style footage, interviewing survivors, and those who counsel them uh, to, to try and give some healing and hope and encouragement to those who have carried that secret and to set them free. You say set them free because survivors, and I am a survivor of childhood abuse, you discover that it's not over when it's over. Mm -hmm. So there is no freedom after that moment of abuse. Right. And we tend to tell ourselves some pretty predominant lies Yes. Talk to me. Do you know what those lies are off the top of your head? Well, the first one that comes to mind is it's my fault. It was my fault. What happened to me is my fault. Um, I'm dirty, right? Uh, taking on what I see is people taking on shame around yes. this. I am bad. Mm -hmm. This all happened to me because I am bad. And that's, of course, of course is a lie from the enemy. So I think at the very core and heart of this project, we want people to come in a way to know that they are loved, that they are a cherished child of God, that they are in fact innocent in this particular event or events in their lives. They did not cause it. There is nothing that they could have done to prevent it. And we want them to be free from this idea that they are bad, that they are dirty, and that there is no hope for them to ever be clean. Yes, because this is not just an isolated issue. One in three women will probably be sexually abused before they're 18 years old. And we know the statistics are for like men, one in five, maybe one yes. in six boys are being sexually abused. So it's not just a female issue. It is an issue for all children that need to be protected. And I think you're the lie, you're right. The one that's so predominant, I'm not just, I just didn't do something bad. I am something bad. Yeah. All those yeah. I am statements and mm -hmm. no one could ever love me. And God doesn't love me. If he loved me, he wouldn't let this happen. To There's me. another lie. There's another lie right there. Yeah. yeah. And so the project is to demystify and to expose these lies for what yeah. they are lies right. and to right. offer that freedom. But, you know, I'll, as a survivor, sometimes I don't always trust things. I'm like, hmm, like, okay, why do you want to do this? How, mm -hmm. Why is this in your heart to do? Well, it, it's it's very interesting. I was I was pursuing a pop songwriting career in Los Angeles, and this this is going back a ways. Uh, and I had my first hit song on the radio, and when I heard it, I felt nothing inside, and I had worked so hard to achieve it, and I thought, hmm, this is telling me something. Uh, our church was open 24 hours a day, and I went into the church in the middle of the night and just prayed and said to God, I don't think I'm doing what you want me to be doing. Wow. And so what, what is it? Because I, I, I want to follow your will for my life. And I got a phone call from a total stranger who had happened to visit our church when I had played one of the three Christian lyric songs I'd written to that point in my life. He called me up and he said, I am starring in Les Rob at the Schubert Theater here in Los Angeles. I've licensed a book on childhood sexual abuse by two Christian authors. I'm going to do a stage play. I want it to have songs. And I think you are the guy who's supposed to write them. Mm. Wow. And I literally did this. Like, okay, that's awfully specific. <laughs> As <laughs> uh, I did not know at that time that my own mom, that that was part of her story. Because it's so often carried in secret, especially for that generation long ago. So um, anyway... I met with him. I looked at the little girl on the cover of the book and I said, I don't know why you've called me, but if you want me to try this, I'll do it. And I went down, went home and got down on my knees at my piano for the first time in my life and said, God, you've brought this to me. I, I want to be equal to the task that you're calling me to help me write these songs. And the first song I wrote was Innocent Child. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so can you share some of those lyrics for somebody who maybe didn't hasn't heard that oh before gosh. because it's so powerful? Just well, a precious it, one. I know you've been sad for so long. Uh, don't blame yourself. You didn't do anything wrong. That's how the song opens, and the chorus is just repeats over and over. It's not your fault. You were an innocent child. You know, so it, it, the whole theme of it just stays in that one place. It's it's almost like a lullaby. It's very gentle, mm -hmm. very tender. Because, because you know, what I've learned is that, that the age that the abuse happened, that little child is still in there. That wounded child is still in there. Oh, yeah. So or we're the sum total, The sum total of every age we've ever lived. And I know in my healing, yeah. I had to go back and address that wounded child within. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of putting it. The sum total of every age we've ever been. So anyway, uh, we were doing this incest survivor conference in New Jersey, which is quite a ways from Los Angeles. <laughs> and our singer couldn't go. So that's how I wound up in a room of 300 survivors sitting in a circle with a piano in the middle and them saying, Steve will sing for us now. And I sat down to play Innocent Child. And I'd been told all weekend, don't hug these women because they don't like to be hugged by men they don't know. Right. I started to play the song and I've never passed out, but I think I know what you feel like just before you do, because I couldn't breathe. I mm -hmm. felt like there was somebody behind me pressing down on my shoulders and I had to slow the song down and gasp for breath to sing each line because the pain in the room was so palpable and so heavy. And when I finished, I just burst in this sloppy sobbing, buried my face in my hands. And when I pulled myself together and I don't know how long it took, but I looked up and there was a line of women waiting to hug me. And one of them said to me, people have been telling me I was an innocent child my whole life. I never believed it until I heard you sing it today. Mm. Yes. And I thought, wow, Lord, I'm supposed to do something about that. And I have that no idea what it is. <laughs> a, a very clear mandate and calling from God and using your music because, you know, music has a way of getting into the soul and into the heart, into secret places yeah. that nothing else yeah. does. Isn't that true? Yes, trauma is actually held in the right hemisphere of our brain. So when we do talk therapy, we're talking to, to the left side where the language is processed, but we're leaving out the side of the brain where the trauma is actually held. Whereas music and melody are processed in the right hemisphere of the brain. So when I sing to somebody, it cuts through everything. It goes right to the heart of the matter. And that's what that woman had experienced. That's why she said that to me. I didn't know any of that at the time. Yes. Uh, when I started the ministry, I've done all the research and now I can talk stats and brain science and bore everybody to death. But the point is, God made us to respond to music. So incredibly rich and true and powerful. And for those who might be listening to this podcast or this recording and you're, and you're not familiar with the Ministry of Music for the Soul, I've been a board member, I'm an honorary board member and a supporter, but you make music for all kinds of things, for tragedy, mm -hmm. cancer survivors and caregivers and heroes and the abortion project and uh, somebody's daughter, which is a project for pornography. So this is your heart and soul and mission, but yes. full circle, it comes all the way back to you being called by God, your soul being apprehended by the Holy Spirit to say to you, I want you to go to the distance with this sexual abuse yes. project and bringing healing. Yes, this has, this is the one that just won't let go of me. I feel a, a, a true burden for survivors. And, and of course, with my own mom's story being a part of it, uh, did, certainly added to that. But I've met so many people and love so many people dearly, people like yourself, who I have seen triumph and flourish after uh, abuse and step into the full measure of what God has for them. And I, I want that. That's my dream for every survivor, yes. not to just survive. Surviving is great. And it's a first step. We have a song called more than a survivor at music for the soul, because God has more for us yes. than just surviving, no matter what kind of abuse or what kind of brokenness we've experienced. Yes. I love all those words, thriving and flourishing and soaring and blooming and being yes. all that God wants us to be. So this project, tell us, how is it going to be presented? And then I do want to ask you, how can we get on board and how can we help? Because this cannot be inexpensive to do it right and to do it with beauty. No, it's not. And, and we are a small nonprofit. 
And so we do depend on the support of people who believe in the, in our mission. Um, it will, it's going to be presented in video form, of course, because that way it can go all around the world. Like a short uh, film. Yeah. It'll be about somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour long. You know, I, I'm not putting any firm, you know, boundaries on that we won't but we will make it uh the length that it can be shown on television we'll make it the other thing we can do and will do is we edit pieces of it together so that it can be used to support like it might just be that one song needs to be played in a certain setting you know and so we edit the testimonies and songs and things so that it can be used in shorter and larger formats so we'll be doing all of that and we'll probably also be having some things that don't make it onto what I would call the final edit of, of a film, extra music recordings and behind the scenes stuff. We always capture that so that there, you know, because there are moments when God steps in and go, well, I know what you were planning, but I'm doing this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, so God. We want, yeah, we want to be open to all of that because that's where some of the miracles happen. And so uh, we've started the fundraising process and it's approximately $100,000 for the project. Okay. And we're about a quarter of the way in. Okay. We've raised about 25,000 so far. So we're off to a good start, but we definitely need some, some people to uh, step up and at least match that amount so that we can get past that halfway point. My experience with all of our previous projects has been, once you get past the halfway point, people begin to see this is really happening. And so, of course, every project, all of our 18 projects have begun with us seeing that it needs to happen. And so keeping that hope alive when you wonder, I wonder, you know, who God has in mind. But for someone out there, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for them to bless others, perhaps to have it be a part of their own healing. So we just want to open, open this up and invite people if they're feeling called, if they're moved by the issue of abuse and want to do something to help survivors. This is an opportunity to do that in a way to create something that will last and, and minister all around the world for a really long time. Our project, Somebody's Daughter, which we released in 2008, is still being shown on television, being used in several places around the world, in several languages around the world. So we know what can happen when we finish a project. And so that's why our, our, our determination is to stay with us until it's done and ready. Absolutely. And everything that God does seems to start in seed form, but it's not meant to stay in seed right. form. It's meant to right. grow and flourish and become, but then it also has fruit that also has seeds. So this will go on right. and on and on and on, right. touching lives, changing lives, reaching lives. I don't know if you can see in the background there, one of the first books that I've written called When the Woman You Love Was Abused. And mm -hmm. so the work is done. It's there now in the, the emails that I get and being on focus on the family and the interviews and the yes. hurting people. And so this is a ministry tool and right. the money's there. And you yes. said something, you know what, listen, the money's out there and this is not a thing for God, but he does use us to be generous. So you said, if you're feeling called, I, if you're not feeling called, just be generous, everybody <laughs> just give something because, because this needs to be done. This is an idea whose time has come and okay. it's our moment. So how do we give, how do we do that? Well, we have a donate page at musicforthesoul.org. If you're on the homepage and the, you click on the menu, donates right there. And then on the donate page, there's a little drop down that says Innocent Child Project. So you can specify your, your gift for Innocent Child. Uh, of course, you can give by check if you want to uh, at the website. You can use credit card or PayPal, either one uh, work just fine. So. Okay, it's easy. It's and easy. we'll put it in the uh, comments and we'll put it in the links here as we post this. And if you're listening to this, please share this with someone, spread the news, help us get the word out. We want to make this project a reality and time is of the essence. Steve, oh, yeah. uh, anything, any last comments? Well, I just, I just want to acknowledge you as somebody, I kind of alluded to it earlier, you are an example of what a, what a healed thriving survivor looks like. And I thank you for your courage and that you've been willing to put yourself out there. I've been with you at live events. There is no star that shines brighter in a live setting that, than you when you share your testimony. So I just want to say to people that if you're feeling 
like your light has been put out, like there's a, a cloud or a shadow over you, you don't have to stay there. Our God is bigger than that, and he loves you more than you can possibly imagine. So step into that. Get the help and the healing that you need. Whether you support our project or not, support yourself yes. in the healing process to get what you need. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much for saying that. Very well said. And if this has struck a nerve with you and you've never told your story and you are such a person that needs healing, you can email me at dawn at dawnscottdamon.com. We'll make sure you get the help that you need. All right, my brother. So excited. I can't wait to see this thing done. And I think, you know, certainly in somewhere in this has to be a starring role for me somehow. somehow. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> thank this you so much, Don. Yes, thank you. We'll talk soon. Okay, God bless.